In this video I'm doing the second part of the ANET A8 scratch build, mounting the heat bed and mounting the extruder. So stay tuned for this video. Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. On this channel I'm posting videos about 3D printing, gadget reviews and more. And this is the second part of my ANIT A8 scratch build video series. So this is going to be about how to mount the heat bed and how to mount the extruder. And if you want to get notified about new videos on this channel, please consider subscribing and also use the bell if you want to get a notification. So let's start with what we have done last week. Uh, last week um, I've shown you how to mount the frame and uh, now we are continuing to mount everything else onto that frame. This is the, the H formed part that holds the heat bed in the end. And this part is um, covered by plastic. So we need to remove that first. I don't know why they delivered this part with, with this plastic film uh, on top of it because if you want to remove the plastic film you actually have to remove, remove all the screws anyway. Okay, now I've reassembled this part. The next step is to fix these two plastic uh, parts which are holding the belt. I'm doing it a little bit different than in the manual. I'm turning it around and I will mount these parts below this part actually. Why? Because the, there's going to be less belt tension. Good. So let's turn this part around and put it on top of the linear bearings. So one recommendation I'm, I'm giving you is put in all the screws first and then in the end tighten them in a diagonal way. So what's the next step? The next step is to use the belt and wrap it around the motor and the pulley and then uh, cut it into the right length. So a few words about the belt that's coming with the printer. Um, it's actually a very stiff. So it is, um, from my point of view, uh, I'm going to replace it. I replaced it on my first printer as well using the GT2. Um, it's, it's also in a link in the description down below. So I, I replaced a few parts anyway, but I'm not doing this in this first build video. So we are going to use the original belt that comes with the printer and cutting this into the right length now. So this looks uh, pretty pretty well aligned. So check it out on this camera here. This looks pretty well aligned now. So the motor and the frame and the pulley are in a perfect line now, a straight line. So what's left is to cut the belt in the right length. So I'm going to wrap it around the motor, motor's pulley here, and then I'm going to say, okay, we want to have some overlap here be able to pull it a bit stronger. Tighten all the screws. And now let's make sure that everything runs smoothly without any forces needed. Yeah, this sounds this sounds actually pretty nice. So mounting the hot bed to our frame. How is it done? I'm using four springs here. These are the distance springs that uh, make sure that the heat bed stays uh, in place and uh, is, is, is keeping its distance from the frame. And then I'm putting four screws through the hotbed and I'm putting down the hotbed through the springs and then mounting everything in place. So I made sure that I push down uh, the beat better good parts so that the, the springs are having a good tension. Okay, so we are done with the heat bed um, for now. Um, the fine adjustment we'll make later. The next step is to mount the Z-axis motors and rods. So one thing you want to make sure when you um, unpack the printer that the Z-axis rods are really perfectly straight. So how do you check this? You basically put them on a, on a flat surface like this table and then um, yeah, just 
roll them over the table and check whether they don't make any strange noises or don't jump around. So if, if any of these rods are not straight, get replacement ones. There's good ones on Amazon or eBay. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description down below because if they are not straight you might get really bad quality out of your printer because especially when you print higher parts your nozzle starts wobbling around and that's a that's a bad thing. Okay so now the motor frames are mounted for the z-axis motors and we're going to slide them in into the frame so it's looking like this on the other side so now the two motors are mounted. Um, I also used the end stop switch here. I mounted it here to the frame so you can see it here. So this part is still loose, so you can, uh, we can adjust it later. We're continuing to the next step, which is mounting the Z-axis, um, starting with the rods. Okay, next step um, is we're using these, uh, these long rods um, to mount our set axis, uh, basically to mount the linear bearings that will hold our extruder. And let's do that quickly. So you will have to push a little bit until it goes through the hole, those rods and don't be worried if it's a little bit tight, it should be tight because later if it's finalized it shouldn't move anymore. Or not at least, at least so easy. So I wasn't intending to use a hammer to fix this problem, but I obviously have to. So I'm using a hammer and I'm trying to hammer this rod through the holder. We hammered this into its place. So last step for this video, we're going to mount the print head. Same procedure here as with the print bed. So now again, let's tighten the screws carefully in a diagonal way. Okay, seems we're done. So last step is we're taking the extruder head and we're mounting it again into that slider. Doesn't move anymore. It's sliding nicely. So that concludes part two of how to build the ANET A8 printer from scratch. Uh, we mounted uh, the Z-axis and the extruder and also the hotbed in this part. So stay tuned for the next part. If you wanna get notified, please subscribe to my channel and also use the bell to get a notification on your mobile phone. And hope to see you next week for the next part in the series. So have a good week, bye bye.